stay ballsy. Don't take any shit from anyone. What do you take me for? Some kind of ignorant baker who doesn't know the price of items and baller industry food outlets? Oh, Zach. The Justice League of Balls reunites as Stay Ballsy teams with Bowler Industries once again. This is John Randall Presents The Show, available on iTunes and Stitcher. My name is John, and I am joined by game developer extraordinaire and spism salesman. Ladies and gentlemen, Angus Chang is here. Hey, everyone. Angus, how's it going, man? Yeah, it's going good. How you doing? I'm uh, not, not, doing, not doing too bad. It's uh, early morning for you. Yeah, it's um, 9 a.m., but it's not too bad. I mean, I've got a job now. I have to wake up early anyway. Okay, I see. Are you, uh, you enjoying some breakfast right now? What's happening here? What are you, what are you having? Yeah, sorry about that. I was just finishing up some some potatoes, <laughs> some nice cold potatoes. you got to bring some for everybody if you're going to do that here on the show. <laughs> sorry, sorry, yeah. Um, is that a, is that a, is that a typical time. breakfast for you? Potatoes? Is that a? Uh... Uh, typically, I don't eat breakfast. Normally, I just wake up and um, take a shower and go straight to work because I like to sleep a lot. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way I like to I'm do on, things. I'm not wa- that wavelength. It's like the whole day is just a, a battle. Just when can you go to sleep? You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you got to do all these things just so you can earn the right to sleep again. <laughs> right. Like, like. If I make plans early in the morning and a friend's like, oh, I'm going to be 20 minutes late, um, I'll probably still be in bed. I'm like, great, I can sleep for another 20 minutes, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you, don't, you don't have to come at all, you know? It's just, <laughs> right? I mean, come on. Don't worry. We can, like, postpone it, you know? We'll yeah, yeah. We'll do, we'll, we'll do it next time, next, next week. So, uh, <laughs> English, you're in, uh, you're in Hong Kong, right? Currently? Yep, that's right. Yep, still in Hong Kong. How's, how's it going in Hong Kong? There's uh, some things in the news once in a while um, in between... Uh, Ebola scares, and uh, that's pretty much uh, all we yeah. the news. But there's some stuff about Hong Kong going on. Yeah, I saw you guys are really worried about Ebola. It's quite. I guess you guys have Ebola, so it's a different story. But uh, it seems like that's kind of dying out now. They're moving on to other sensationalized stuff now. But um, that was like yeah. the last week. But um, what's but yeah, Hong Kong. There's um, oh, there's just a few protests about uh, democracy and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, it also seems to be dying down a bit. But basically, like a uh, a few sections and like some key areas in Hong Kong have been blocked by protesters. And the really funny thing is, like, this is just like really annoying a lot of people. <laughs> That's pretty much a lot of people. Like, yeah. oh damn! Now I have to take the train. You know, like <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> that's like the key word. It's really so. Funny. Is it like the majority of people are are more annoyed than participating in this? Um, I wouldn't. I don't, I don't know about the majority. You know, like there's a lot of people who support the protesters, and it's generally like. The y- younger people support the protesters. Uh-huh. Older people are like grumpy about <laughs> um, <laughs> grumpy about taking the train instead of whatever bus they yeah, like yeah, to take. Yeah. Which is, I, I think, it's really funny. Like, the whole thing's to, to, funny. Yeah. To be honest, like I live on a different side of Hong Kong, so it does not affect me at all. So. Oh, that's nice. So yeah, you just I don't kinda, really you care. Just, you just get to kind of look look down and kind of laugh at everyone. Well, the, the really great thing is like. Um, <laughs> Um, when these protests were first happening, it was like when it first started, it was really causing a lot of problems for public transport, and a lot of people were taking a really long time to get to work. So maybe it would take them like two hours to get to work instead mm-hmm. of like one hour, right? Yeah, yeah. And the great thing about that was everyone was late for work. Yeah. Um, but it didn't affect me at all. But I could still come in late, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> so I got the protesters. Uh, Angus, uh, yeah. you're four and a yeah, half hours guys. late. So I did the protesters. Sleep. I couldn't make it. I was like sleeping at 4 a.m., waking up at 10.30. Oh, <laughs> man, protesters. <laughs> got me again. You gotta, you gotta keep these protests going somehow. <laughs> yeah. So you know. Yeah, actually, a lot of my colleagues were like joining in on the protests after work. Like, they go to work and then have to work. Yeah, oh, yeah. Protest a bit and then huh. go home and have some dinner, you know? Okay. It's quite funny. Very nice. Interesting. So, Angus is here. Angus is the co-host for the evening. And uh, as co-host, Angus has certain powers that you achieve here. Oh. And uh, that means you can uh, invite guests on the program. Yeah, that's right. 
OJ tried a few times, but he just the people that he comes up with, I had to reject. <laughs> strange things, oh, okay. strange fetish. Thing. I don't know. Whatever. We're not gonna get into that. But uh, OJ. you uh, you decided to um, invite some people on. Why don't you tell everyone who's coming? Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, as you guys might know, I um, I used to make Xbox Live indie games, and the Xbox Live indie community is um, is pretty small. If you if you're familiar with Xbox Live Indie Games, you probably know less than one game is coming out a day on, on that store right now. And and the other thing is um, that really helps the community is um, on other app stores, when you submit an app, well, let's just go through the different processes. On Google Play, if you want to get your app on Google Play, you make your app and then you submit it. And then it's just on Google Play. They don't even check it, which is pretty... <laughs> Pretty horrendous, but you know it's also good for developers because you can just kind of do what you want. Okay. And on uh, Apple, um, you submit your app, and Apple does what they do: they play it, they run a bunch of tests on it, and if it passes, you know it's on the store. Um, uh, pretty much, most app stores will use like Google or Apple's method, but Xbox Live uh, came up with their own method, which is really uh, a bit crazy. Um, so Xbox Live, um, I think they started in late 2008, and this was basically before any of the app stores. I think the Apple App Store was around, but you know it wasn't a proven concept. And Xbox Live came up with this idea where you submit your game, and then other game developers review your game. So they wow. play it, run tests on it. They don't they don't review it to say it's fun or like it's it's not buggy. They just review it against some pretty strict guidelines. Like one, there's no content violations or like no Nazis. And how do they, how do they encourage these these people to do this to, to review these games? Yeah, I mean, how do they um, come, how do they come up with these people to do it? It's just other developers. Well, so, just ask um, them. Yeah. Would you please review this game for us? Like, yeah, some people do that, and I used to get like a lot of emails from other Xbox Live indie developers asking me to review. But generally, um, there will be about twenty or thirty developers who have a game in review and they will just review all the other games hoping for like a review back you know like kind of like on twitter how people like to follow back okay oh okay so it's like a back and forth it's like a it's like a you know you review my game i'll review your game and the problem with that is like (laughs) if you you're not going to review somebody's game and then fail it and then hope that they pass your game (laughs) that's true yes there's not, you know, like, to be honest, there's nobody's really um, passed any games that really clearly shouldn't be passed. Maybe there's some, like, edge cases, but nobody's, <laughs> yeah, it does happen, but um, people generally do fail games if they find Those are the games I'm fun. looking for. If you know of an edge case, please let me know, because those are the ones <laughs> I want to play. Oh, I, I checked out the Xbox Live Indie Store, and, like, it's uh, uh, recently, and it was... I've been there. It's just <laughs> scary yeah, place. It's just like gone towards that direction, you know, because uh, like sex definitely sells, and uh, and the other app stores don't let you do it. And Xbox Live is like, yeah, just do whatever, <laughs> in a way. Right, right, right. But yeah, um, uh, I forgot what I was why I was talking about that. I was introducing this guy, and I just yeah, yeah, the guest, the guest, so, yeah. Yeah, I just got distracted and started talking about something. That's right, I distracted. So, yes, you. right, I did it. <laughs> the guest, um, I know him pretty well because. Uh, um, because of the Xbox Live review process, and also he's like a pretty high-profile guy in, in Xbox Live. He's um his name's Jeremy Eden, and I think there's also another guy called Ty who's going to come along, and they're from um I don't know what Ty's last name is, so sorry Ty. Uh, Perhaps from, he'll know. He he, he may be able to sh- shed some light on that. That's question number yeah, one. Yeah, maybe he'll know. <laughs> yeah, he might know. But you know what? He might not either. So it doesn't really matter. I don't be, think you know. Be ready for that. We'll just make okay. one up for him then, if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. I think it's something ballsy. Yeah. Die balls. So they're from uh, J-Force Games, right? Yeah, they're from J-Force Games. And uh, J-Force, um, they they, um, <clears throat> they, <clears throat> they started an Xbox Live Indie, like, right from the beginning, I think. And actually, because of them, I jo- joined the Xbox Live Indie program. Um, they started a series of YouTube blogs that were, or YouTube videos that were really, really funny. So they were documenting, like, their game development process and like doing stupid things, mostly doing stupid things. They weren't really doing that much development. And they were working on this game called um, Unstoppable, which is actually still not out yet. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. 
Yeah, so they've been working on that one for a long time. I think they've redone it a few times, and um, since then they've also launched other games. Um, the first one they launched was something called Avatar Showdown, and it was like a really simple, um, really simple, but also really fun um, Avatar game, you know, Xbox Live Avatar game, where you would. Um, yeah. It's like a fight, so, it's like a fighting game almost, right? Uh, yeah, it's like a it's like a fighting reaction time game. It's cool. And then the, the game they have they, right now that's huge is uh, Murder Miners. Yeah, which is like the number one rated Xbox Live indie game. It's huge. It's a big deal. Yeah, and also they were able to get that game on Steam, which is something I have not been able to do. So um, I'm very jealous. Really? What's the? Is it just difficult to 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 work with the Steam guys? What's going um, on? To be honest, I didn't really try very hard. Um, because I just felt like it, I didn't. I don't really have anything that's of Steam's quality. But I did try to go through Greenlight, and that did not work. Um, I'm not sure what Jeremy did to get onto Steam. Maybe he went through Greenlight. I'm pretty sure he went through Greenlight. We're and... to, should we ask him this? This is a we're yeah. compiling a list. What's your last name? What is Ty's <laughs> last name? <laughs> and uh, how to get on Steam? Okay, here we go. That'd be a good introduction question. Like, hi, Jeremy. You didn't end Ty. Ty, what is your last name? Just an inside joke that they have uh, no idea what's going on. Yeah. Um, so did, did did they actually uh, review one of your games to get it approved? Yeah. So and, they could have um, they could have crushed Angus Chang right there. That could have been the end of you. <laughs> yeah, and, and the funny it. thing is, like, their second game. The reason they approved it was because uh, they approved my first game, Get Rich or Die Gaming, and it also came out on the same day as their second game, which was like some Avatar massaging game. Oh yeah, um, very nice. Yeah. Getting that one later. Yeah. Awesome, so, man. So, uh, yeah, hopefully these guys will be joining us a little bit later, so it should be fun. Yeah, we need to chase them up. Like, Jeremy is on Skype, but his icon is yellow, and he is away, so... All right, so as long as uh, they appear and we can uh, get, get them on, they, they may be on. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. You never know. This is how we do things here. Anything <laughs> can happen at any time. It could be an explosion. Hopefully not. Hopefully not, but... Not, not in my... Ready. No, okay, yeah. So, uh, Ingus, how is uh, the Oya going? Oh, uh, the Oya, yeah, I've got it. Um, I fired it up and I made... Well, I started working on a on a port for the Oya using Unity, and then I just didn't do anything with it for the longest okay. time. So, uh, yeah. But I'm enjoying the starts, so... So, if people don't know... Uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully. So, if people don't know, DSP moved, and in the process, he was getting rid of a lot of stuff. So, um... He was getting rid of the Oya. He didn't want to bring it with him. So I wound up in my position. So small. Jesus. That's what I, that was my argument. What, what is he moving into? Like a shoebox? I, I don't yes. really know what's going on. But um, right. there was like 10 different people at his house. And no, no one wanted to take the, take the Oya. So I felt bad. So I was like, I will take it. And um, I talked to you and you you wanted it. So I sent it to you. Yeah, that was really nice of you. Oh, I didn't know I had DSP's Oya. That's, that's DSP's Oya, yes. That's the one from the show he was doing the Oya reviews on, huh? Uh, yes, probably. I, unless he has, like, maybe he has a bunch of them, I don't know. And um, so the, in the yeah. process, you got a bunch of Stay Ballsy shirts, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. What did you, what'd you do with these shirts? What happened with these? Like, you got, like, I several gave, of them. I gave, yeah, I gave some to my colleagues. I gave some of the bands to my colleagues. They seem to like them. You should give them to the protesters, maybe they... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! So I, I need you, you to go. Got, like, I need you to go talk to the protesters. Get them all to get one, maybe from me. You know, this is our slogan for the protest. Hey guys, this is the new uniform. Everyone buy it. <laughs> Stayballsy.com. I'll get like an order for a, buy a uniform. You gotta. You, you can't protest. So. You're right. Yeah, you can, you can't be here. You're not a real protester. And then I'll I'll get like an order for you know a lot. It'd be great. Yeah, you can't possibly fill that order, but you know whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, OJ's gonna be busy. <laughs> he's gonna have to. Yeah, he's gonna have to hand make them. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, again. Uh, what do you think of the the OEA in general? Did you did you mess with like the games and the layout of it and um, just the whole the controller like the whole experience? Like, do you have anything to say about it at all? Um, the controller, I'm not really a big fan. It's like it doesn't feel nice. Did it's you see really the, good. how the batteries go in? Did you figure that out? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. weird, it's, right? It is weird, isn't it? But. I, yeah, and it, they come in like one goes in the left slot, one goes in the left of the controller, the other goes in the right of the controller. It's like you have to like pull it apart. Weird. The whole controller like comes apart, right? Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't feel as nice as like an Xbox or a PS3 controller. I don't know if they work with the new PS4 and Xbox One controllers, but yeah, it's it's nice that Oya lets you use uh, controllers from other consoles because they're just way better. 
Um, but the Oya like game, some of them are really nice. Um, yeah. But it's just I don't know. Like I never, I never want to play an Oya game because it's it's a bit of a hassle going to a TV to play a game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely a challenge for people to to get into that. Yeah, but I, I really tried, like the concept. It's like, cheap, like it's small, like they really tried to you know really help you out with it. But it's just it's such an uphill battle, I think, with that kind of thing, you know. Yeah, it's a bummer. I mean, like I should support it a bit more because um, it's like it's basically the nice thing about working on OIA is compared to Xbox. You know, on Xbox there are like three categories of programmers. You know, triple A. You know, like Modern Warfare. Uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. Call of Duty. Never heard of. Um, it. Yeah, no, I don't know those games. Either. I don't know what that is. Apparently, they are quite popular. Um, oh, yeah. And then there's the uh, Xbox Live Arcade games, which is like you know Super Meat Boy, cool stuff like that. And then there's Xbox Indie, and and the funny thing was like being an Xbox Indie dev, like Microsoft just treats you like shit. You know, they're <laughs> like <laughs> like we're like, hey, Microsoft, you guys forgot to pay us the last three months. You know, you owe me like a thousand bucks. Really, it's like, like that, huh? Wow. Yeah, it is like that, and then they're like, "Oh yeah." Um, then they actually pay you though, but they just they're just kind of like behind on it. They think maybe you like you won't notice, and they'll just keep no, the money. They, they have this like fucked up system where like all the other stores pay you um, every month, right? And okay, they yeah. pay you like fifteen days after the end of the month. Xbox is like, "Oh, we'll pay you guys every three months, and we'll we'll pay you forty five days after the end of those three months." Like, <laughs> like. So if you make a game, like you have to wait, basically like years, <laughs> 125 days before you will get oh the my money. God, wow. <laughs> but you know, like it kind of queues up. So if you, you know, after you wait that time, it's it's okay. Can you like, can you like look at the money you owed during that period, or you, you have no idea? <laughs> no, you don't. You, you, you like you you get sales data, and then it always crashes, and it's just like sometimes it's just wrong. And it crashes. Like, they, this is this is wild. I well, guess. <laughs> it doesn't actually. It doesn't. Crash. It's just like wrong, you know. Like, oh, be like hey okay. man, today you made like a hundred thousand bucks. You're like, oh nice. And they say it's like, oh actually that was a bug. Sorry. And, Sounds uh, a little bit like the uh, the Google uh, Ad system. <laughs> ad mob. Oh, uh, was it AdSense or, or something? something? Yeah, AdSense. Oh, okay. Or something. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, you know, like Google and Apple, they'll like tell you how much money you're owed in in your currency. So they'll say like, oh, we're gonna give you like eighty Hong Kong dollars or whatever. Microsoft's like, hey, we're gonna you're owed like. 40,000 Microsoft points and like what what's the conversion rate between a Microsoft <laughs> point and a US dollar? I don't know. It's yeah, you got to convert it's a real currency, guys. It's not. It's like you got to convert the Microsoft points into US dollars and then you got to go from that to to Hong Kong dollars. Yeah, they're like, "Oh, one Microsoft point is like 0.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1572, you know, it's US cents. Like, why why did you guys do it like this?" And like, like I'm smoking know. mirrors, man. It's Bill Gates or something. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but actually, I think they don't use Microsoft points anymore, so that was from the past. But yeah, basically, well, too bad. Xbox Live, <laughs> Xbox Live is like in Xbox Live Indie. Like, they're still paying me, um, and there's still developers developing on it. But mm -hmm. they're just—I feel like there's basically no no one <laughs> in Microsoft who's responsible for it. Is it and, on uh, Xbox One, and is it what's going on with that with the indie games? Oh yeah, with the indie games on Xbox One. Um, uh, to be honest, I don't know. Um, I do know that Xbox Live indie games um, are not on Xbox One, so that's a bummer. It might come in later. I'm pretty sure it will because. Um, so you think you they know, might just bring game... them all over? No, no, no. no. I, I think they won't do that because <laughs> they just hate them so much. But <laughs> but they might. Why do they uh... have these games? I mean, it seems like they're they're very like you know. The redhead stepchild, maybe. Like, is that, is that kind of thing? Like, we, we'll deal with you. We don't really want you, but all right. Yeah, I, I think um, the history of that is like some some really great programmer at Microsoft made a game framework called XNA, right? And XNA is a it's, it's just really great. I mean, Jeremy will tell you how much he loves it too. I'm sure. And um, and then because XNA was made game programming so much easier, somehow they decided to come up with like an Xbox indie platform, right? And then the games came out and they just they just hated the games, I think. And they just didn't want to support it because the games that were coming out weren't what they wanted. Yeah. Um, I think they wanted something a bit more high quality, you know, something a bit 
like maybe sixty percent as good as arcade, but now it's like just filled with a lot of really terrible stuff. <laughs> like people probably you know they did notice it's there. I could do that, right? I could yeah, make, I could yeah, make I mean, a game. Yeah. Here we go. Here's my that, that is that is like a really good point because if you like if you're just some ga- if you're a gamer and you're on Xbox Live indie games and you're like God, it's like like some five year old made this and you really should think like. Hey, I could make this like, <laughs> and you know what? You you can, you know, you could make that because yeah. that sucks. Yeah, but, it's not but, really um, the point, right? You know, but it's a good stepping stone, right? No, no, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There's probably there's pluses and minuses to it, you know. Yeah, like just joining the community like yeah. proves your programming skill and game programming skill a lot. So right, right. Um, let's move away yeah, from really games. Uh, let's move away from games for a second. I want to I want to ask you about something. Um, I, your your website bowlerindustries.com. Mm-hmm. And I just go through the stuff. I just love the uh, the stuff you write. Sometimes really, oh, really? just amazing <laughs> stuff. And uh, as an example of that, you wrote, you wrote this uh, blog here, and it was called "How to Pay Less Rent." <laughs> I love that story too. Is this yeah. true? This is a, this is a true story. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. I'm right, gonna have to tell everyone what this is all about. How to pay less rent? Should I just read it out? Yeah, whatever you want to do. If that's easy. Uh, I just read out the story and. Um... Okay. It's a pretty short story, so yeah. you know, don't fall asleep, guys. Okay, so it starts like this. I used to pay a dollar less than my monthly rent. It was $480 a month, but I always paid 479 Finally, after four months, my landlord said, Hey, did you know you've been paying a dollar less than you're supposed to? Uh, and I was actually with my landlord at the time, you know, like on the street. And I said, I did know that. Because it was absolutely intentional, but I pretended that I didn't, because I had intentionally underpaid for a laugh. I was holding a can of Coke at the time, as I often am, and I pretended to misunderstand. I underpaid for this Coke? Uh, no, she paused because she was embarrassed. Uh, never mind. I acted curious. No, come on, what was it? Uh, the rent. You've been paying 479 instead of 480 Really? For how long? Ever since, uh, for the last three months. Hmm, that's weird. I'll look into it. Nah, don't worry. It's not the money. I was just curious as to why that was happening. The next month, I paid $478. <laughs> <laughs> did you say yeah, anything I, about that? or just? I, no, I really did do that. And then, um, just my landlord just didn't bring it up. I, you know, like, who cares? It's $2. She just, yeah. I think she probably was like, she went to the red agents and they're like, what you, what's going on? Like, and they're like, I don't know, we just paid four seventy eight. Well, it's uh, it's amazing what you could get away with if you just try, you know. Yeah, it's like go for it. Do Save a t- dollar. Do you tend to do stuff like this in other aspects of uh of the world? <clears throat> yeah, I guess I do. I mean yeah, I I definitely like to troll people a bit. Yeah, I mean you gotta challenge people sometimes, you know. And, yeah, it's uh, fun. Like, if she asked for the the five bucks, whatever it's been, you'll probably give it to her, I assume, right? Yeah, I definitely had it. Like, just... but now you now you might get a twelve dollars off a year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, just keep pushing it. You might. Who knows? When you get this down to, she's gonna be paying me rent soon. <laughs> yes. Hey, bitch! You owe me the rent. <laughs> she's like, I just got a bill from you. Uh, well, yeah, Two it's the rent. <laughs> Two dollars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's wonderful stuff. Do you suggest other people try this method? This will be this will be crazy. I definitely say try. I mean, see what happens. I don't I don't think you'll get evicted. If you do, I'm I'm really sorry. But, uh, yeah, we're not responsible if you are. But yeah. you just may get a dollar off every month. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, you have uh, the, the site's great. The bullindustries dot com. I want to talk about phony girlfriend a little bit. Are those guys around yet, or? Uh... Sorry, what was that? Uh, you broke up a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Are those guys uh, available, or are they're they're just uh, not yet? No, oh, those guys. Um, no. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna wait. Let me ping them on Facebook because I got them on Facebook. All right, I'll just keep talking. So... All right, Jared. Uh... <laughs> um, just... Yeah, I was talking about phony girlfriend. Yeah. And uh, on the site, you have like just crazy stuff, man. You have like all these stats. And like you know, uh-huh. you know, you know, like what, you know when it will become profitable. You know, like uninstall rates, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's awesome you could break it down like that. Um, yeah, I mean, those those are really basic stats you get from Google Play. Like the uninstall rates, uh, I think only Google Play provides that. 
and um, the when it be, will become profitable. That was actually totally wrong. I mean, it it beat that estimate, which is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you saw you like you break it down for everyone right there. It's just really uh, an interesting thing to, to check out. Um, something that I found yeah. interesting is you you guys were saying on there that. Um, you could actually get like a replay file of someone's experience with the game, and you can mm -hmm, kind of see mm -hmm. like how they played the game. Yeah, we could do that because the game is so simple, right? It's like um, basically all we would need to do is like mark down which button they press, and also mark down what time they pressed it, and then that's all we need, right? Like generally, um, that's one way you can make replay files in games. If you just if you if you imagine you. Um, take any game and then you just record every frame the game runs um, what keys were pressed uh, that will make a replay file huh. it would be really big it might be like unnecessarily big right like if you have a chess game and your chess game runs at 60 frames a second right and um, you record like every the state of every key on your keyboard and you record the state the XY position of your mouse and whether you click and whether you click the mouse button or not that's definitely overkill for a chess button, a chess game right that's not going to be necessary and and actually often it's overkill for every game but that will probably uh, <laughs> that will that will be like a pretty general way to make a replay file um, so that's one way you could do it um, wow but we we didn't do it because um, um, we're we're just a bit lazy because really we should <laughs> really we, sh okay. we should we should be um figuring out like where people are getting bored where people are you know what people are liking what people are doing like we like i work at a mobile games company now and we like track everything you know we like whenever the player does anything we know right like wow and then we analyze that data and we're like like well we like in see, real like, time like as it's happening you know uh, not real time because we're, we're, no not real time okay a little bit later, <laughs> a little bit later. Yeah, maybe like a, a day or two later, and then we'll see like, oh, like in level, um, we, we've got this game, it's like a questing type game, and like we'll see like in Quest 6, like, oh, everyone's like, and so in Quest 6, we had like 200 players, uh -huh. and then after Quest 6, uh, there's only 80 players left, so like, clearly that shows you there's something wrong with Quest 6, maybe it's crashing, maybe people don't know how to do it, or maybe they think it's boring, right? And huh. that kind of data like helps you design a game, but it's... You're, yeah, you never notice people just playing completely wrong. They're just yeah, yeah. incredibly like, we, what, are they, what are they thinking with this? Come on. Yeah, we, we, we can play test, but it's also really good to like kind of analyze what people are doing live in the world. And I think like all mobile games are doing this because um, mobile phones, they're generally going to be on the internet and, and people want that data. You know? They want to mm. see like, what's this guy doing at all times? Like, yeah, and mobile phones are kind of like web browsers except way more extreme, you know, like, there's so much more personalized, you store your photos on it, and you store, like, all this great stuff that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, advertisers really want, like, the really scary thing is these advertising uh, SDKs, um, which is basically, like, ways of putting ads in your application, right. they're getting so much more invasive, you know, like, oh, they, wow, uh, yeah. it's, okay, cool, Jeremy's ready, uh, you want to, you want to bring him in, or, um, yeah, I want to, um, oh, yeah, tell him to add you first. Um, yeah, add me, yes. Jeremy. Me... As you're doing that, though, like, does this go on with the major games, like like AAA games? Like, do, do they actually uh, do this similar practices where they see what you're doing or they know which, how you played and, and things like that? Is I, this a widespread yeah, thing? I, I think so, yeah. I think wow. so because previously it wasn't possible, right? Like, a lot of games were offline. and um, But now it seems like most people playing AAA games will also be on the... Uh, oh, of course. Yeah, they'll also be on the internet at the same time, and you you just need internet to collect that data. So while you're so, playing uh, your pl while you're playing your Call of Duty, there might be some uh, somebody watching you. Kind of, yeah, like kind of watching. They are. They are um, they're not watching you. Like they're not watching your screen. Like nobody's yeah. got time to watch all the screens. Like, yeah. but they could if they wanted to. No, they can't. But <laughs> but um, they will definitely like watch you in a general sort of way. Uh, mm. And. Yeah. They're probably laughing at your gameplay. Who knows what they're doing? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, we do. Like, we see some guy. <laughs> yeah, we do. Like at work, we do play tests, and like, we're trying to make the game as simple as possible. Yeah. And we have this feature where like you're supposed to tap on a character. Right. And sometimes people didn't know who the characters were, so we kind of put like an arrow 
a pointer at the character, like, hey, this is the character. And then we, like, shine a spotlight at the character, right? Uh-huh. So we're doing a playtest once, and, like, the quest is tap on a character, and, you know, it's, like, point in the arrow, and the spotlight's on, and then they just tap on someone else. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, people <laughs> will actually make that mistake. <laughs> so, wow, yeah. wow, wow, wow. Yeah, it's a whole other level, and then you got to figure out how do I explain this to them better, right? And you gotta, it's probably frustrating. Because you think something's simple, but it's obviously not. Yeah, it's, and then you it's gotta quite figure out how to explain it. Yeah, the, the whole key word is like retention, keeping people in the game. And um, to increase retention, you kind of have to, yeah. one, dumb down your game and like hold the player's hand, like, hey, do this. And then right. they're like, what? You're like, do this, do this, do this. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see. Uh, they're ready to come on? Uh, He's, yeah, I think he's adding you now. Yeah, I got him. You got him? Yeah, he's yeah. ready, yeah. All right, I got a couple more <coughs> things I want to talk about with you about a funny girlfriend. I got uh, some pretty uh, interesting stuff I found online. Okay. But uh, I guess we'll get back to that. We'll bring these guys on for a little bit. Um, let's see if this works. We'll try to give him a call. Okay, cool. Right now. Uh, hello? Hey, Jeremy. See you there? I do not believe so. There we go. Something's happening. Hey. Hey, Jeremy. What's up? <laughs> Jeremy, how's it going, man? This is uh, John here with John and Angus right now. Cool. Looking good, man. I got your uh, webcam going. All right, cool. I, yeah, I can't see you. I can see Angus Chang, though. You don't want to see me. I'm uh, <laughs> oh. disgusting. You don't oh. want to deal with this right now. That, that sucks. Yeah, well, it is what it is, man. <laughs> Hygiene problems, you know. Yeah. Um, Actually, yeah. So, all right, so we got uh, Jeremy here from GforceGames.com. It's the maker of the number one... GforceGames.com. Makers of the number one rated Xbox Live indie game, Murder Miners. Yes. And uh, our first question for you, uh, what is Ty's last name? We're trying to figure this out. We couldn't figure it out. Ty's last name is Douster. Ty Douster. Uh, no, now we know. I was hoping for something more interesting, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jeremy Eden, John Eden, and Ty Douster is the team. All right. And you guys are out of Texas? Yep. So uh, Angus was telling me that you guys met kind of through the um, Xbox Live Indie Game review process. That we, that, what about it? You guys kind of met that way through the review? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's how we so met. we're saying uh, you could have like basically shut down Angus right then and there and re yeah, removed yeah. this plague from the world that, that is Angus Chang. <laughs> yeah, we could have contributed to that. No, we like, we like his games. He got 20 games. So. Oh, he's, he's the best. <laughs> uh, so Angus, uh, Angus, you wanted to, to have this gentleman on? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, J Force, I, Jeremy. I don't know if you guys, if you know this, but um, like the whole reason I joined uh, Xbox Live was watching your uh, early um, vlogs on YouTube. Yeah. Like early um, in I think 2008 when you guys were working on it's Unstoppable. Yeah. That's what made you yeah. get into X and N. Yeah, yeah. It's like a friend of mine uh, when I was at uni watched your vlogs and found them really funny, and we both like looked into X and A, and and yeah, that's that's how I started. Uh, on X and A. Um, Glad we could inspire you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you worked on uh, Unstoppable for quite a long time, and then the first thing you actually released was uh, Avatar Showdown. Uh, do you think you could talk a bit about, you know, how you came to release that and why you decided to like take a break from Unstoppable and to move on to Avatar Showdown? Yes. Hey, Ty, you want to say hey? Ty just got back from McDonald's. Ah, uh, good. Where's there you is, at? This is Ty Douster. Hey. How are you doing, guys? man? Hey. Angus Chang. You remember Angus Chang? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, Ty. I love that game. <laughs> <laughs> That's that cool. was the classic mod book. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so after our showdown, um, basically, so we were working on Unstoppable for like two years. And uh, we saw a bunch of people 
you know, making good money with quick little avatar mini games. And we were like, hey, we can do that too. And so we thought of a quick little game that we can make, which is just a, a remake basically of uh, Samurai Kirby from Kirby Superstar. So we just remade that, put avatars in it. And we're the first actual avatar game that had uh, violence where you actually had avatars fighting each other in some form. So it was number one seller in the first uh, month. Yeah. And yeah, right. it was it was it was definitely like quite a big hit. I mean, it was a really fun little cool game. I mean, you you guys made up some really cool avatars. I think Michael Jackson was in it, uh, Kanye West. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, that was our unique little thing that we did was um, for the single player, you'd play through different avatars that we that were supposed to model after famous people. I guess Michael Jackson and the last boss was uh, Chuck Norris. <laughs> of course. After, yeah. After you beat Chuck Norris, then you play Jesus. Uh, but cool. Jesus is, is, un, is unbeatable, and he just gets the gets zero seconds every time, so you can't beat him. He just strikes you down. He doesn't even move to punch you. The son of God. <laughs> you know, that's how it is. Um, who came, up with the, uh, who came up with the trailer for that game? I saw the trailer. It's awesome, man. Yeah, that was that was my my doing. Oh, wow. So they, they had the trailer for this game. It's basically all these like really great quotes. And it's always J-Force Games giving the quote. So it's oh, like yeah, stupendous yeah. J-Force Games. And then there's um, there's one that says, this trailer is dumb. You. <laughs> and I, was like, okay. I, think, I think Kanye West said some shit. And, uh, it was just really, yeah, really fun. Yeah, and we did that just... Threw that together pretty quickly, just to be funny. We try to we try to do different things with our trailers. So, yeah, you also find out that Jesse's gay in that trailer. Oh, oh yeah, spy very. That was a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah, our favorite part is the Brian Pepper at the end. He's our he's a cool dude. And that's up on uh, your. You have a YouTube channel, right? J Force Games on YouTube. Right. You guys, right. Uh, you guys can check it out there. Um. So let's talk about. Yeah. So, yeah go ahead. Go ahead, Angus. Okay. Yeah. So um, after Avatar Showdown, you guys uh. You guys are supposed to go back to uh, what's it called? Uh, Unstoppable. And. And. I, I can't remember why, but you guys worked on the, Avatar Massage Online. Right. And then yeah. there was this there was this huge uproar, you know, everyone was getting really upset. Uh, I, I don't know why, but like basically the whole Xbox Live indie community seems to be against you. Um, do you think you can like talk a bit about that and yeah. what happened there? Yeah. Um, we went back to work on Unstoppable and then later we decided, hey, let's make another quick game, make some quick money real quick. Um, the Avatar games were still selling well, and uh, the massage games were selling well. There was like four different massage games on the top 20 selling games. Yep. And zombie games were selling well, of course. And so there, there's always kind of this running gag that if you made a game called Avatar Zombie Massage or something, uh, the yeah. big trends, if you made that game, it'd be a, a runaway success. It was kind of like a joke, like nobody would ever seriously do that because it would just be too much. Um, but so we did it. Uh, originally, that was the name of the game. It was originally called Avatar Zombie Massage Online. And uh, <clears throat> whenever we released it in the peer review, I created a thread on the forums um, trying to justify why we made it, like trying to explain why this isn't wrong and why there's nothing wrong with making a game just for money. And, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the developers weren't. You know, having any of that, they um, they just wanted to condemn us and say what we're doing is wrong and blah 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 and hate on hate on us and say you know we shouldn't be releasing this game that's unethical and blah blah blah. Um, They're not the ones making the money, so it's easy easy to say that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we always said if, if these guys actually had an idea for a game that they knew would. Was would be guaranteed to make the money that they would definitely do it. Just that they don't either. Yeah, they don't have an idea that they think would definitely make the money, or they think that if they were to release this game, a game like that, it would hurt their reputation so much that it might be worse for their bottom line in the long run. So either way, it's a bottom line 
consideration that they're making. Angus, mm -hmm. how do you feel about this, Angus? Uh, making a game just for money? Um, yeah, totally I got no take. problem with doing that. I mean, I've definitely done it before. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like my most recent one, Phony Girlfriend, that's, that's just for money, really. It's, I do enjoy like, the concept, but it's really about... The whole, the whole idea behind it was, let's make some money. <laughs> so, did, it, did it work out for you? Yeah, it did. It's oh, great. good. All right. Congratulations. It's selling well, yeah. <laughs> good. A massage game, we only spent six days making that, and it made us like $20,000. Wow. So that was yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's awesome. And... The whole thing about making games for money, we, this is something, this is an argument that we're pretty passionate about, that we would argue to the death with people, is that, you know, in order to make money, you have to make people happy. They don't just buy the game because they were tricked. I mean, they, that could be, in that case, they have to be wrong. But if they're buying the game knowing what they're getting, and they decided to buy the game because they, they thought it would make them happier, then mm. we've done we've done good. Yeah, people. Do people enjoy the joy the game for the most part? Or? Yeah. All right. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the whole. That's the goal of a game designer should be to make people happy. <laughs> and so, I mean, if your if your game is making money, you know, it's making people happy. That's the best way to measure how happy you're making people. Mm -hmm. So after uh, Avatar. Uh, massage Avatar Zombie Massage online. Uh, you guys moved on to. I think you went back to working on Unstoppable. And uh, to to be honest, that that game looks really great. I can't wait to play it. So whenever it's coming out, definitely uh, contact me because I've been wanting to play it since 2010. You know, <laughs> for a long time. Uh, that was nice. uh, yeah, it looks like a great game. Um, so you guys went back to working on Unstoppable, and I kind of stopped following you guys or just got out of the loop a bit, and then suddenly Murder Miners came out, and it's just like the biggest hit ever. So yeah. can you can you talk us a bit about like how you switch from like, it's just a like completely different game to something I thought you'd make, you know, it's like a really high scope game, it's 3D, it's it's online, it's it's uh, a yeah. death match, you know, it's, yeah. I was really surprised when you guys made that, to be honest. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, it, really great, can, so just, can you tell us a bit about, about yeah. that? Uh, so basically, yeah, we went back to work on Unstoppable again, and uh, Eager Rapper, you know, Eager Rapper, we had him doing the animations for the game, and he quit on us, and so things were really looking good for Unstoppable. Um, we we basically needed to find a new animator, and just the scope of the game was pretty large, and we just there were so many problems with it, so we decided, hey, let's take a break from this again. Let's work on another game to raise funds for Unstoppable because we're going to need it. Um, and we had always wanted to make a game like Halo 1, Halo Combat Vault, and we saw that the whole uh, voxel-based games, the block-based games like Minecraft, were also blowing up on x -Blade. and we So we said this is a good opportunity to make a block-based game and like the Halo 1 game that we've always wanted to make. So basically, yeah, I saw one of the reviews today. It said... They describe the game as Minecraft and Halo have sex. <laughs> did, you, uh, did you see our trailer for that? The Halo Minecraft trailer? I did not, no, I did not see that one, no. Okay, if, if you liked our Avatar Showdown trailer, you'll love that trailer. Okay, I, I gotta check it out. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. check it out. Oh, Angus, you're gonna love this. Um, yeah, you guys should like watch it right now. Maybe you should, if you can share your screen or something. Um, yeah, you, we could probably do that. But you can watch it later or something, but uh, okay. let me like two, one second. It's on jforcegames.com? Uh, yeah, you'll find it there. Scroll down on, on the blog, but I got it right here. It, it actually got removed from YouTube. And you'll see You'll see why. <laughs> all right, here, all right. I added it on funnierdie.com. There's the link right there. <clears throat> yeah. Let me check this out. It's not endorsed by Minecraft. <laughs> Okay, I got it. Let's see here. I'll try to get it up for everybody to see. Right. Where did you, okay. where did you see that description about Halo and Minecraft having sex? Was um, that? someone I think someone just wrote it somewhere. I, I don't know. I just did a quick search. Yeah, yeah, that was on. We actually got a guy named uh, Kerspeedy 
he has like six million subscribers on YouTube and got him to do a video on it. And he linked to that, to the, to the trailer. And that's when it got pulled because so many people were checking out the trailer and I guess <laughs> enough people flagged it. Yeah, I got it. I got a plan for everybody right now. I can check it out. All right, great. It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Carrying Master Chief into bed right now. Okay. Is this a live stream or? Yeah, it's just, it's just live, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Holy shit. Some pelvic thrusting. <laughs> <laughs> Holy. Wow. Oh, jeez, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it's like three minutes of this, is it? <laughs> Somehow not enough. <laughs> yeah, it's it pretty graphic. Good God. <laughs> did you, uh, were you the animator on this? Did you make this happen? Yeah, I made this whole thing, yeah. Frame by frame. Yeah, it's all, all the animations made. I had a lot of fun animating this. So uh, yeah, for for you guys, uh, <laughs> if you guys are listening to this on uh, iTunes or the MP3, it's uh, basically um, a sexual act between Master Chief and the Minecraft character. <laughs> yeah, they call him Steve. Angus, uh, let's get your live thoughts on this. Sorry, what was that? I was, I was watching the You're video. You're mesmerized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. It's a good trailer. It's a bit long, but it's, yeah, yeah, but it's good. Yeah, it's good. You be cut down. Yeah, the length is yeah. I might have got more views. The shorter. All right, good stuff. If you guys <laughs> want to see the rest of that? You go check out the uh, the original place for it. Ooh. Incentive for you. But, uh... Well, thanks, yeah, for, so, thanks um, for sharing. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Murder Miners was just huge on uh, on Xbox Live, and I, I saw you guys were pushing out updates really, really um, consistently. You know, like maybe something once a week, maybe every ten days, which is like really hard on Xbox Live, isn't it? Because you have to go through the whole review process. Right. Um, and then you've you seem to have moved it onto uh, Steam. Um, do you think you can talk a bit about getting your game onto Steam? Yeah, um, it took way longer than expected to get out on Steam. We're hoping the port would only take like two or three months, and ended up taking like seven months. Plus, we needed some post-release updates to fix bugs. Um, mm -hmm. That's yeah. There's if it was if it didn't have networking, you know, if it didn't have online multiplayer, that wouldn't have been a problem. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't have took nearly that long. Uh, it's, yeah, it's mostly because of XNA networking problems that it took that long. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's see, advice for going from XNA to PC, I would say. I don't know, I, I, if we could do it all over again, we would have probably just made it in Unity or something, not done right, next. Right. That way we could have had it on Mac and and Linux and iPhone, Android. So, yeah, that that's what we learned from that. Um, so you think there was like so much work involved in bringing it to PC that you you would definitely be better off writing the whole thing in Unity? Yeah, may, I maybe. I mean, that that's what I think. Uh, yeah, it might have took a little bit longer, but I don't think it would have took that much longer to just rewrite it all in Unity. It would have, wouldn't have been a complete rewrite because Unity uses C Sharp also. Yep, yep, yep. That's true. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the Steam version is, is doing pretty well so far. Not as well as the Xbox version, but it's definitely going to be worth it. Did you expect yeah. that it would become the, the top-rated game on Xbox? Uh, no, we definitely were not expecting that. Did it, take, um, did it take a long time, or just all of a sudden, like overnight, it was like, boom? Oh yeah, we were number one rated like since release. Like, pretty much always, we were wow. number one rated. There's a little bit just going back and forth at the first couple of days or so, but 
we got the number one spot. How do you deal with that success? Is it just coke and hookers at that point, or are you more conservative? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, we uh, try to keep the coke and hookers to a minimum. Okay. Yeah, mostly it's um, well, mostly weed and fast food is is what we're into. <laughs> <laughs> the the low budget version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, another thing about the Steam version. I, was, I wish we would have known this before releasing, but if another piece of advice for any developers first releasing on Steam is to use your update visibility rounds in the beginning. I didn't even use them for our updates. So you get free visibility. Um, when you update your game, you can just select it, one of your updates to be in the update visibility round. And so when, every time you do that, you can see a spike in sales. And I wish we would have done that earlier instead of we accept a release months so after update release. update visibility is like you make an update and you want it you want more people to see it uh, sorry yes. I don't understand what it yeah is. on the front page of Steam there's a section that says recently updated and, uh, okay uh, yeah you can get your game to appear on there on the recently updated section if you, you just gotta set it up on the site yeah. okay so um Murder Miners, I guess you guys will be quite busy with that for a while, but um, what's your future plans? Like, What do you guys, what do you guys got? Um, yeah, we'll, just leave? yeah, we're pretty much done with Murder Miners. We're going to maybe do, I mean, we're definitely going to do at least one more update on Xbox and uh, maybe a couple small updates on PC, and then we're working on Murder Miners 2, which we might call Murder Miners X, because Xs are cool. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, we expect Murder Miners 2 to be uh, way bigger than Murder Miners 1 and really put us on the map. <laughs> Murder mm -hmm. Miners 2 is going to be very, very ambitious. Like the ultimate F FPS in my mind. Awesome. Yeah. Um, on your website here, it says your favorite game of all time is Ocarina of Time. That's right. What do you have to say? What do you have to tell us about Ocarina of Time? Why is, <laughs> it, why is that the game for you? Uh, I guess because it was, I mean, it was mostly because of nostalgia, I guess, obviously. Um, that was just one of the, the games I was most into as a kid. It's just one of the most immersive games that I played as a child. Um, I really like the music and the atmosphere of it and the story. I mean, that was, I mean, looking back at it, the story is pretty lame, kind of, but... Um, and just had a lot of really cool moments that, you know, and when playing games in my childhood, that would, that it really stood out. The moments in Ocarina of Time that made me just say, "Man, this game is the best game ever." I, I, every time I played, it, I was always just thinking that. That and Perfect Dark, those are always the two wow, games. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Um, question for uh, both you guys: Like, what do you feel about the state of the game industry today? Um, seems like a lot, a lot of Good amount of complaints about things out there about like DLCs and uh, like like day day one glitches. It seems like is going on right now. Um, what do you, what do you have to say about just how things are going at large? Um, just as far as um, you said DLC and yeah, like uh, like you know day one DLCs. Oh yeah, yeah. things like um, that. Yeah, uh, well, I guess you're asking kind of about the ethical issues of, of day one DLCs, and whatever you want to, whatever you want to say about it. Yeah, I see, I see a lot of complaints about it. People, you know, the game just came out. Yeah, there's a season pass or whatever, or the the twenty dollar extra thing. You don't get the full game. Seems to get people pissed off. And there's also the cases where like people find the the content on the disc, but you can't access it unless you pay <laughs> the money, and, and that that kind of uh, that kind of jazz. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm all. I'm mostly on the side of uh, the companies, the businesses, when it comes to day one DLC or any sort of complaints that gamers would have. I, I mostly, when gamers are complaining about stuff like that, I mostly write it off as invalid complaints, um, especially in the case of like day one DLC, or if yeah, if, if they were to find content that's already on the disc and they were to compl complain about it and say that that's that there's that that's wrong or something. 
that that, that should be included in the game already. Um, I say, no, that, that there's nothing wrong with that. that. That's just, if you don't want it, we'll buy it. And that's just, it's just like raising the price of the game, basically. Right. And, I mean, yeah, like, if you were to raise the price of a the game, there's not really uh, as much an uproar when you simply raise the price. But if, you know, when doing day, day one DLC is kind of like raising the price. But you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Um, I, I wasn't explaining that very well. I've never... No, it makes sense. You know, it's just your opinion. Um Another thing I noticed, people are saying like games are they're coming out. They don't seem like ready to be released. I guess the new Assassin's mm. Creed is a is a case of that recently, where <laughs> it's got like, yeah. a ton of glitches and all kinds of problems. And why was this? You know, what do you think about that? Do you think uh, their games are being pushed out too fast, rushed out, and they can just fix them later, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. I mean, that's definitely justified complaint if there's glitches and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, that's just companies having to get the stuff out the door and not you know, putting glitches down at the bottom of, of the priority list, thinking, ah, this is it's not going to be a big deal. We can fix this later. Or maybe they decide to not fix it all because they don't think it'll affect their bottom line at all, so they don't. Um, which, yeah, I mean, glitches, glitches are, are bad. Yeah, like, with that whole Assassin's Creed thing, I feel like, you know, this time of the year is like... Um, is really high pressure for game industries. Like I work at a game company right now, and, and we're pushing really hard to get a uh, get stuff done by the end of November because we, we we do mobile games, and and basically you can't get anything through certification on Apple in December because it's just such a huge flood of stuff. So yeah, I feel like um, with Assassin's Creed, they probably made like some marketing commitments with like Xbox or PlayStation and. And if they didn't hit that deadline, then they wouldn't get whatever, whatever, whatever. So they, they just hit the deadline and, you know, uh, put out something not ready. Uh, and then that's the thing with software, you know, like, you can deliver stuff that's not ready because you can update it. So there's kind of, like, this feeling like it's okay to have bugs, you know. Um, but really, Assassin's Creed, it's not really okay. I mean, that really hurt them a bit, I think. But in a way, it's also, like... <laughs> They got a lot of publicity for the game. I mean, I saw so many screenshots for it. Like, part of me was laughing, and the other part was like, hey, this game looks pretty fun. Like, if it wasn't so buggy. Which, I'm sure they'll fix the bugs. So, it's it's just kind of like, it's bad, but, yeah, the industry is kind of heading towards that sort of direction. You know, get things out faster. Even, you know, people paying for betas, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I'm if as long as the consumers are, are you know, are, are voicing their opinions or leaving negative reviews and stuff and doing what they can to disincentivize companies from releasing glitchy games and hopefully that will that won't be as much of a problem. Um Yeah. Did do you guys have problems with the, the day one DLC or content on the disc? I mean, do you think that that's wrong for the companies to do that or what do you think, Angus? Uh, no, I, I think, like, yeah, I kind of see what Jeremy's saying, like, with um, content on the disc, they want DLC. It's not necessarily, like, yeah, it just seems scummy that they're locking you out of something that you kind of already have. But you're not really paying for the download, or you're not really paying for the back-end system. It's like, you are paying for that extra content, so they kind of, yeah, they want to set the price for... 80% of the game at you know, $60 and the remaining 20% they want to charge you 20 bucks. I think it's okay. It kind of like annoys people because yeah, it, it does seem like games are getting shorter and then people are pushing harder to make more money out of gamers. Like, the other sad thing is mobile gaming is like, they don't really like it that much and uh, mobile gaming seems very much not about gaming, more about squeezing people for money. So that's not really the direction I love but... <laughs> But in a way, we kind of are getting more gamers in it. So, yeah. Imagine if all the content was on the disc, and maybe you just paid five dollars for the disc, and then all the all of the game content was on the disc, and you just got to pick and choose which content you wanted to buy. Hmm. And that would be kind of like taking the day one DLC content already on the disc to the extreme. And to me, like when I look at it that way, I, it seems like like clear that it 
there wouldn't be anything wrong with that, but maybe that's just me. It's just kind of a scary thing because what's the future? Like people are going to just keep giving you less and less and keep charging more and more. You know, that's, that's the scary part. But the consumer yeah. is the ones that let this happen. If they buy all the stuff, and the companies go, we can, we can get them for it. So why not just keep doing it? Right. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big, uh, it's a messy thing. Yeah. yeah but I mean, uh, another thing is like last night I was reading a, a book by the, it, it's not really a book, it's like a set of diaries by the developer who made Prince of Persia and it was set in 1985 and he's talking about, he goes through like his negotiation process with a publisher company, publisher and he asks for like 20% royalties, right? And he wants no salary up front, you know, no, um, no, no signing bonus or anything like that. And when I read that, I was like, 20%, like, because right now on all these app stores, we're getting 70%, you know, without, just off the bat. And, and he's also talking about how, oh, I don't know if I should go back, if, if I should, like, become a movie producer or if I should continue working on this game, like, because is there even going to be a game industry in, like, two years' time? So, like, you know, 1985 compared to now, like, things are really healthy and we've got some really great games coming out you know like gta 5 that looks totally awesome can't wait to play that on pc but we also do have like a lot of scummy practices uh in the games industry yeah right on it's money to be made like, that's what happens yeah i mean it's such a big industry and like day one dlc i'm kind of okay with it but what i don't really like is like these addictive IAP games, you know, the ones where it's like basically kids or like grandparents buying lots of dog food for their virtual cat. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. Like Bongo? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. We actually, I mean, uh, I mean, Ty, or we want to release these videos with talk about ethics in video games and. That was one of the, our main videos. We'd go into Farmville and talk about Jonathan Blow. This is mostly Ty's writing. Um, and just talk about how Farmville is basically not unethical. Um, which is pretty controversial because most people like point to Farmville as like the epitome of an unethical game. Um, so someday we'll be releasing those videos. They'll be entertaining. <laughs> All right. No, is there uh, sex with Minecraft characters in that video, or just uh, <laughs> no? <laughs> uh, no. So we'll we'll we're gonna leave leave sex with video game characters out of our marketing, probably. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, Jeremy, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Everybody, go check out jforcegames.com. Um, what's the J? Is it, is it Jeremy Force? Is that what's going on? J Force. Uh, originally, it was. Jeremy, Johnny, and Jesse. Ah. And, yeah, but then we actually, well, that was back before we were even making games. Originally, it was me, Johnny, and Jesse, and we just made PowerPoint cartoons, and <laughs> J-Force. And then later, we decided to make games, and we got Jordan on the team, and then we got Justin and Ty. So, we, said, hey, we got a uh, call. To Ty ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> I know his last name, though, so it's okay. Um, do you all uh, do you, you guys have Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff? People can find you, all that, all that. <coughs> Twitter, J Force Games, and Facebook slash J Force Games. All right, man. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. All right, cool. Talk Thanks. To you later. Good. Good. Thanks, Good. Jeremy. Yes. Bye bye. Good to see you too. Still there, Angus? Yep, still here. Yeah, your uh, your camera froze. Maybe uh, try to restart it or something. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll do something. See what you can do with that. There you go. Nice. So that was cool, man. That was, uh, it's nice for me to, an interviewer, I don't have to do a lot. I pretty much <laughs> take care of business on that one. Uh, that was a good time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite cool to finally talk to Jeremy. I mean, like, We've been talking through uh, Twitter and Facebook and the uh, um, Xbox Live indie game forums for a bit. But so it was the first time you guys actually ever spoke to each other? Yeah, with audio. I mean, we never met, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like meeting him there. Yeah. He was standing up. I wonder if he was like um, doing that on his 
Xbox One or something. <laughs> should have asked, yeah. Yeah, I should have asked, yeah. Right. So, yeah, those are, uh, those are you know, interesting questions, you know, like ethics and, and all that stuff. And it seems like everyone's got a very strong opinion on it, you know. <laughs> yeah, so. it, it should be really good when those guys produce videos because I, I can't exactly remember why, but for some reason, J Force was pissed off the exploit community. Like, yeah, well, I can see he's very, I, uh, very opinionated and yeah, yeah, <laughs> strong in his beliefs, you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, best of luck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've got a great game out right now, so yeah, doing very well. So, um, let's get back to phony girlfriend. I gotta let's get into this. Let's, let's see here. Sure. So I did. I looked. I looked around the, the internet a little bit about it, and um, I found this forum, and someone left a, uh, made, they made a thread about the game. <laughs> so I ought to read this to you, I don't know if you ever saw this before. Yeah. Um, they have a question, perhaps you could answer it, the maker of the game. Oh, no. So she says, uh, <laughs> she, she says, my husband, my husband downloaded this free app called Phony Girlfriend a little bit ago. I saw it and it really bugged me. I mean, porn is one thing, but a virtual girl to flirt with and chat with? Being, being sent pictures and whatnot. I know it's virtual. You don't even really type your text. You choose from three options, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. Some of the virtual girls you have to pay to upgrade and talk to them more. I brought this up with him the first time, and I was really upset that I calmed down because at least it's not a real person, you know. And he deleted it, but was peeved about me being upset. And I realized, well, maybe it isn't much a big deal. Until he got it again. It feels like he's flirting with fake girls while I'm with him, and the text choices sometimes really hurt me when I see what he texts back to them. I even downloaded it and tried it out to see if there was anything that should make me feel weird, and there is. Especially when he is now pl paying for some of the upgraded virtual girls. Am I overreacting? <laughs> <laughs> Angus, what do you have to say about this? Well, I mean, like, yeah, we, we when we were developing this game, we we did kind of imagine this might happen, um, and to be honest, I feel really bad because, um, you know, that woman's really upset, and yeah, and I feel like what she says is pretty valid. Um, I don't really have a way to make it better, right? Because. <laughs> Yeah, we did make it just like for a bit of fun, and we weren't really intending to ruin anybody's marriage. Um, but I think it has happened a few times. But do you really think um, that that would be the game's fault, or is it probably there's some other issues going on there? And if it wasn't the game, it'd probably be some other. Like, I, like yeah. I really doubt that there's like a very strong relationship, and then the guy gets the game, and then he's just like, "I'm, Bre you know, this is over now because I'm just Brenda. It's all about that." You know what I mean? Like, there's got to be some kind of a underlying yeah, yeah, yeah. problem. It's definitely like something else, but like it's still like, you know, it's not good to be the trigger, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is, you've heard of the other stories like this? Uh, have a vibe. Let me think. Let me think. I like, no, yeah, we got some reviews, like, we got one review on, on uh, Google Play where somebody said like, somebody rated it one star and then they said, this will ruin your marriage. And Wow. <laughs> Well, you know, you don't really know the backstory with that. But another thing was like a lot of people were getting really upset uh, that we killed the main character Brenda at the end of her script. And yeah, I wanted to ask you about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What? Basically, uh, people were getting really upset, sending me like <laughs> messages where they said they were crying or. Oh whatever. my god! They were really attached yeah. to Brenda. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people got really attached to Brenda and. Basically, me and my partner decided we were going to um, um, unkill her, so we just changed the script. So uh, it no longer happens? It does happen, but then you find out, like, basically, the way you find out Brenda dies is her friend messages you and says, hey, this is Kate, and <laughs> Brenda was killed by an elephant, you know, along the way. Wow, lines. it's funny, because uh, last time you were on the program, we had OJ play the game. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't mention anything about that she died. <laughs> So you, tr you you didn't even like say listen you know at the end of this, so we eventually found out. Oh yeah. And I I wondered like did you do something wrong like uh, did he did he like screw up and that's how she died or like but I guess that's just yeah. the ultimate ending right. A lot of people thought that too you know because because it's a multiple choice game uh, 
there's definitely like we could create scripts that branch out and have different endings. But we didn't. Like no matter what you do, she's gonna die. And a lot of people emailed me or contacted me somehow and said, um, Brenda dies every time. What did I do wrong? How how can I make her not die? Like and I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, she's always gonna die. Yeah, people and, die. It's it's how it ends for everybody. So <laughs> felt like uh I don't know how to say it. Like Yeah, you really took a beating with this game, huh? Relationship ruined and <laughs> People lost their fo their fake girlfriend and just this is really something. Yeah, I guess. yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's a cool game. Like, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. It, well, people, if people can get bit that wrapped up in it, obviously it's good, right? If it's um, if they get that attached and that like, this guy, like this guy here, deleted it, but he 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 was obsessed. He got it back. His wife found out. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't yeah. let it go. I mean, wow. Yeah, he was he's a paying customer. You could like take over you could like take over countries, Angus, with this. <laughs> yeah, with my army of fake girlfriends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so with that, um we're working on a boyfriend version and Ah. It's just it's just horrible making a fake boyfriend game. Because you gotta because, do the, um, uh, the dialogue and No, nah, that that part I don't do anyway. The picture I of did, the guy I did. with no shirt on and Exactly. That's like <laughs> Yeah, like staring one of the most one of the most fun parts of making phony girlfriend was like going on to Instagram and like finding models, right? And then like checking out pictures of models and then contacting them and then getting them to appear in the app. That's fun, yes. but if you make a boyfriend game, it's no fun at all. You do the same process but the reverse. Yeah, it's just you know, like I'm sitting there like checking out hot guys on my <laughs> computer. Dad comes over, he's like, What are you what are you doing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with the you know, protest I, story. You guys probably, you guys, yes, no, 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 programming stuff. Yeah, and, and we don't, you guys probably don't know this, but like male models, they just like the photos they take, they're just all like the strangest photos ever. They're just all like uh, homosexual erotica, basically. Like, yeah, it's just like that's what I do. Yeah, it, yeah, it really looks like it really looks like. I'm looking at gay porn when I'm contacting these male models. So then you have to, you have to contact them. Say, can we um, use your photos? And yeah, that's basically the. So process. you have to contact like, these dudes. I love your photos. Can I can I use them in my programming? <laughs> yeah. So basically, what I do is I go on Instagram, find. Well, I'll just go there. When I was when I was doing funny girl, I went on to Instagram, found some like pretty girls. If they have any, if they're probably a model, they'll have like some way of contacting them. Send them an email and say like, "Hey, we're making this game. We'd like you to appear in it. You don't need to do anything. We'll give you X amount of money." You know, and then if they say yes, go for it. If they say no, uh, whatever. And what we found was like, only ten percent of people said yes. Wow. And if you need to get like, yeah, and if you need to get like twenty um, girlfriends, you have to like send two hundred emails, right? Wow. So you spend a lot of time going through these Just galleries. Digging through, yeah. Wow spamming people in. So really there's like probably about like ten hours worth of male models I need to check out and it's just not something I want to do. <laughs> well good luck with that, Angus. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. Um but you know, I feel like it could be something people want, you know. I think girls would like it, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Gotta go for it. Yeah. And of course. after that we wanna make something called phony messenger which is um which i think you guys will like a lot more because it's a lot more creative uh the format is going to be really similar to phony girlfriend uh, well actually what you might know about notice about phony girlfriend is the format is really similar to tokyo hosto or the fantastic five sim mm -hmm. because really the gameplay is just choosing a b or c right and if you go down the wrong path you lose go down the right path you continue right um, we want to make Phony Messenger where you play as a different person instead of talking to a different person and, when, and you stay the same each time. So, so you might be able to play as like Kim Jong-un and then you'd be like responsible for like all of his things. You'd like send nuclear missiles off to like America, like get into arguments with Obama. Develop like strange weapons. Eat lots of, 
eat lots and lots of food. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw this on the site. It was, you called it like situational scripts or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. That's what I like to call it. So and, you, um, you actually play as like Kim Jong-un and you would decide yep. what he does for like, for like his day or something? Yeah, yeah. And, and you, that's kind of like Tokyo Hosta where you play as like Jason Trace. And yeah, you are, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have to like do whatever he does. And then it's also like um, the Fantastic Five where you play as a uh, female Alex and you have to have a five and... and 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 why why do I want to do this? Because I really like making games like Tokyo Hosta and I like making games like uh, Fantastic Five and I like that format. Yeah. But it's a bit of a bummer making those games because uh, it takes a long time to make, right? To get the assets together it takes like three months, right? Because you have to hire animators, voice actors, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it really sucks if you if you. You never really know whether a game's going to be um, a hit or not. You never, never really know whether... Like, I could write Tokyo Hosta's script and then survey loads of people and say, hey, do you, do you like this game or not? And even if they all say yes, it could still fail, right? The only in way you can know if a game's going to work is if you, if you make that game. So if we make Phony Messenger, we can kind of make... We can kind of get a way of making prototypes of those games and we can make the scripts a lot quicker. So we can, we can put together, like... 10 phony messenger scripts. Oh, that's awesome. And then whichever, yeah, and then whichever one's the most popular, we like make it into a fully fledged game. So it's going to be a similar know, format where you have like, you have the choices and then you, and then you kind of, it tells the story as you go, right? Exactly, oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah so man, that's, that's your, what, that's your that's, bread and butter, man. Yeah, that's, that's what, what, like, that's what we like so. to see from you. We like that stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, basically that's the plan. But I still have to do like, funny boyfriend first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then funny messenger, and then get onto that. So yeah, funny that's what protester. I'm so you can keep the uh, get yeah. away for work. Get that going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, are you playing any games right now? Are you, are you playing the uh, the Assassin's Creed, or just like you just heard about it, or like anything anything else recently yeah. you're getting into? Uh, I just bought a PC on Monday last week. It's really powerful. Um, nice. And. Yeah, I want to get back into some gaming. Um, last week I was playing StarCraft Two, the Heart of the Swarm. Okay. Yeah, really, really good game, but it seemed really short actually. I was kind of bummed. Like, I think I played through the whole game in like gotta, two days. You gotta buy the DLC. <laughs> do they have DLC? I don't, think I don't know. Play. They probably do. I have no idea, honestly. Well, they always do <laughs> those uh, those add-ons, right, for those games. Yeah, I would well, buy it like if they had it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For yeah, me. I guess the main thing with that is like playing online, but online StarCraft is just really competitive and scary. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think is Chang like to do for for fun? You are, do you, are you uh, what do you do? You're a movie guy at all, or uh, yeah, I guess I, know, I read quite a lot. I go hiking. Uh, I watch movies. I saw Interstellar last week. How was that? Interstellar. It's like um. Yeah, for, uh, yeah. But how how is it? I know what it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it was really great. It's a long movie, but I don't know. I just love uh, I love like spaceships and space exploration. It was really cool. Awesome, man. Well, uh, that went really fast today. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna have to come back again at some point. Like it really flew by. Yeah, it's a good show. It's cool, cool yeah, to have Jeremy. Just strong show, man. Yeah, that was great that you brought him on, man. Really appreciate you uh, even doing this at all. Hey, cool. I love doing this. It's great. We uh we got a couple of messages from people that uh, found us through you. Oh really? <laughs> on, like Twitter and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of Angus, and I uh, saw your, your show. It's all right. That's cool. <laughs> so hey, Angus Angus always pays dividends. That's right. <laughs> um, so next week's show is gonna be our Black Friday show, which we do every year. Do you guys have that uh, out there, the, the Black Friday? It's after, um, usually day after Thanksgiving, our, our Thanksgiving. Yeah, we becomes, have something. Yeah, okay, what do you got? We have something called, like, White. I forgot what it's called, but it's like, it, it used to be, like, Singles Day, right? Uh-huh. And it's, like, a huge online shopping day. Okay, yeah, yeah. For yeah. some reason, everyone, like, there's, like, all these discounts on that day, and uh, everyone buys stuff online. It was Singles Day. It was, like, <laughs> it was, like, a day for people who don't have girlfriends or boyfriends. And it's a shopping just, day. Yeah, and it filled out the hole in your heart. You just buy yeah, shit. Yeah, and, and then it, it's like, oh, you're lonely. You have no boyfriend. Why don't you buy some stuff online? <laughs> and huh. then, 
and then it turned into couples day. <laughs> oh, what the? And now it's like, hey, buy your girlfriend something, you know? <laughs> Well, I'm sure you've heard the, uh, the stories of the Black Friday here in the, the U.S. where yeah. people, like, yeah. fight each other and, uh, you know, it's kinds of craziness. So we always do a, a Black Friday episode every year where we kind of run down all the, the goofy sales and, and, and whatnot that are taking place at all these retailers. So we'll be doing that next week. And um, that's going to do it, man. Everybody check out BowlerIndustries.com for all your gaming needs. Still, I'm still trying to uh, complete all the games that you that you've done. I think oh, which ones are you guys missing? I mean, I think the ones you played are the good ones. The other ones are like the Gata Fish we haven't done. Uh, some, some oh, that's, ones, but... yeah, that game. I mean, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> that game was just the worst game I've ever made. It happens. Yeah, but, uh, can, can all be hits. Today was perhaps one of the, the best shows we ever did, so that that makes it up for it. Um, oh, thank God. you very much, Angus. Thank you for all you guys that checked it out on the stream today. And uh, on, on YouTube, iTunes, we're, we're on like a hundred different things. I don't know. I can't even keep track of it, but, uh, you know. Thank you, everybody. Angus, any final words for, for the people? Um, thanks a lot, Ramboisians. Um, I hope to make a really cool game for you guys soon. And, um, yeah, stay ballsy. <laughs> Check out Angus on Twitter, at Bowler Industry is the tag there. So that'll do it. Thank you for listening to John Rambo Presents. The very best in free and optional entertainment. We'll talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. Stay safe. See you later. Bye-bye.